What is going on, guys? Your boy Joey672 coming to you guys with the video right now. So, obviously, very tough. Eagles uh, are out of playoff contention with the loss um, to the Dallas Cowboys yesterday. This whole team just looked horrible. Um, there's a lot more that goes into it, obviously, and I uh, want to go over some of the news that has dropped this morning. Um, that is uh, Doug Peterson um, expects to be uh, the head coach um, in 2021, um, he thinks his job is safe. I don't think he's worried about anything. Uh, this unquote morning uh, said that I feel tr fully confident to be the head coach of the Philadelphia Eagles in 2021. That thing I'm the most proud of with this football team, we've seen it in the postseason three of the last five years since I've been here, and that's pretty good. We've won a championship here. We've gone through a season where a lot of our veteran guys are not playing Due to injury, we're playing with a lot of young players. There's always going to be evaluation in the offseason. Of, obviously, my job is evaluated as well, but I fully expect to be the coach next season, and I welcome that opportunity to get things right and get things fixed and take this team to the next, next season. Um, now, I don't believe anything Doug says just because... I mean, he said the same thing about Mike Rowe and Carson Walsh being here as their quarterback coach and their OC, uh, or wide receiver coach and their and, and their OC, and and the next day they were both fired. Um, so I really don't believe much from this. Um, but Doug um cannot play call anymore. I mean, I'm not even just talking about this game that we just played the other day, but. We have been going backwards, and we have been the decisions that were made. I think Doug had a lot of control over some of these decisions, but as the season went on, he lost that power, especially of who you know, especially with the quarterback position. You know, there was a certain amount that we can only deal with, and to the point where if this was happening on any other team, if Carson Wentz was playing this bad for this long another team it wouldn't have happened after week 11 12 whenever he got benched okay this this would have happened a lot earlier in the season and that's what frightens me a little bit about this you know i know some of these players have had a lot of injuries and that's due to not taking care of their bodies this is just something that we've been dealing with since the super bowl and the injuries have just gotten worse every single year it's ridiculous um Obviously, at the end of the day, Howie Roseman is the head honcho. He sets up this roster the way it is. But Doug's got to use these guys the right way. Jalen Rager earlier in the season was used on third downs. Worley wasn't used in games. Was used on motion in the backfield. And that's pretty much it. I mean, I think Jalen Rager has a lot more to prove. And I think he's got a lot more ceiling. As, as much as fans don't think he's good, I think he is good. I don't think he's that number one guy. I think he's a good number two here. You know, um, I mean, I could be wrong, but I think they still need this uh, a number one guy in the building. I think the philosophy to this offense is garbage. Um, Doug has strayed away from a lot of things that used to work here, like using a bruiser back. He doesn't like using those guys. Earlier in the season, he wasn't using, he was using Boston Scott the same way he would use Miles Sanders, just run him up the middle. He wouldn't use him in the past game, but when Miles Sanders got hurt, um, he would just use him the right way. And it, it takes injuries for, you know, for Doug to use these players in the right way. And, you know, and still, there's still complications. Even to think some things do look right, there's a lot of things that still look wrong, okay? You don't know who to put on the field. Travis Fulgham was your best receiver after week four leading the NFL, especially with the receivers and receiving yards. And Alshon Jeffrey gets gets back. And with Carson Wentz, he only had, what, 15 yards in three games, okay? A lot of issues here. Jordan Mulata plays a few good games at left tackle. Jason Peters gets healthy during the bye week, and they bench Jordan Mulata while he's playing well. Um, this is this is just a huge problem. I, of what he does, it's a huge problem. Now, there's speculation that Howie Roseman has forced Doug to play certain players, but I don't know. I don't believe it too much um, until I hear it from a good source. 
I'm not going to believe it. Okay? This comes down to, like I said, at the end of the day, Harry Roseman drafting. Yeah, you skip. You, you don't hit drafts for year, for another few years. This is what happens. You get to the end of the season where you have a lot of injuries. You can't replicate anything on this in this offense or this team. And it just doesn't work out at all. Doesn't work out whatsoever. So um, offensively, um, I don't think he used. I don't think he used Carson Wentz the right way. Obviously, a totally different offense when Jalen Hurts was in there. And we could say that Jalen Hurts isn't great. We could say Carson isn't great. You know, just from these games that have been played. But at the end of the day, Doug's system wouldn't have worked for any quarterback. It's worked for Jalen Hurts. But the issue is, after a couple games, the Cowboys pretty much knew it was coming. They knew what plays were happening. I've rewatched the film. The read options were just getting played out, and there was nothing much else going on. Okay, after two games, there really wasn't, you know, there was a lot of tape, enough tape to to read what Jalen Hurts was going to do. And there was no, there was no different offense. There was no creativity in this offense by Doug during this game the other night at all. Cowboys read almost everything that was going to happen in this game. And unfortunately, that's the price we have to pay. And this is why Doug can't call plays. This is why Rich Sangrell and Marty and all these other guys cannot be here. We cannot have offensive assistance. It just can't happen. No matter who's going to be our quarterback in 2021, no matter who it's going to be, Doug has got to hire an OC or the or the Eagles in general need to hire the best guy out there. And if he's even staying, this could all be a lie. I mean, he says this, but I don't know whether to believe it or not at this point. Okay. Uh, you know, Doug's happy we've made the postseason four out of the five years, but unfortunately, not enough. You know, if your offense looks this bad and you actually have good players, why don't you? Why, why didn't you use Quez Watkins? Why didn't you use certain guys in certain ways? Why didn't you run the ball a lot more when when Carson Wentz was that quarterback? Because keeping the ball in Carson Wentz's hands wasn't the right answer. Okay, you know, you didn't balance out any run with with the pass with Carson Wentz, kind of put him in a spot where, you know, it's already enough Carson Wentz is playing terrible, but not giving him any help to get pressure off him was not the right thing to do either. Okay, so there's a lot of things going on with this, and, you know, it is what it is at the end of the day. At the end of the day, it is what it is, so... Other than that, guys, that's pretty much it. Let me know what you guys think about Doug Peterson keeping his job for next year. You believe it. You don't believe it. I am not sure what to say about it anymore. But there's a lot of problems. that, that and This is why Doug can't just can't call plays and, and be in charge of this roster on offense anymore. So, see you guys later. Chase, go up. Files fly. Peace out, guys. Peace.